In this session, I am going to prove that a function defined by a power series, convergent power series, is analytic in the disk of convergence. There is another proof which I had already given in the series of three lectures on double series. There I have given a proof there, which uses the notion of double series. In this session, I am going to give a direct proof of this fact by understanding only function from a different perspective. And this proof will be very simple and conceptually easier for everybody to understand and reproduce. <laughs> yeah. And this also emphasizes why I keep on uh, saying that it's important to understand the concepts in depth. Okay. Just don't read something, a proof, accept the proof just because line by line you check logically correct. Okay, try to understand what really happens and whether there are different perspectives for the proof, etc. I hope you will enjoy the proof thing. Okay, we will get started. Yeah. So, let us quickly recall. So, the a function of this form c and z power n n equal to 0 to infinity okay this is called a power series and suppose i am going to assume the following thing that you know what is meant by radius of convergence of the power series okay we are going to assume our r is positive okay and uh, let B0 or this is called the disk of convergence. Okay. The sum of this series for every z as z varies over here, okay, this is absolutely convergent and hence convergent. It defines a num complex number. We will assume CNs are all complex, complex valued function. Okay. And Fz will be a complex number. So therefore I define a function F from where to B0 or to C. Okay. We want to prove this is analytic. Okay. What is the definition of analytic? For the, in case you this is the first time you are coming through, we will just look at it quickly. Let F be any function from U and open set in C to C. Okay. We say F is analytic on U. On U, U for every a in u there is an r positive such that br is contained in u okay uh, and there exists constant c n in c such that for every z in b a r we have f of z is some c n z minus a to the power n, n is from 0 to infinity. Okay, that means f is analytic means, so intuitively f analytic, if only if f is locally a power series. Okay, so one fact Okay, keep this in mind. What are the facts which you know about power series? So let us look at power series f of z is c n z power n zero to infinity z in some b zero r where r is positive of course. Okay, right. So as I said, we know that okay, f is infinitely differentiable. And how do you get f dash? f dash of z is got by termwise differentiation n equal to 1 to infinity n c n z to the power n minus 1 and and hence f dash so on. Okay. And right and the third thing is if c n is nothing other than nth derivative of f at 0 divided by n factorial. This is true for all n. Okay. 
So these are the facts which are already known. I am going to make use of them. So I hope you would watch my lectures and power series. These things are all proved there. Okay, right. So what I want to say, so let us assume, so what is the theorem? Theorem at f of z c m z power n 0 to infinity okay for z in b 0 r b f power b f given okay then f is analytic on on b 0 this is the, what we want to prove so let us try to understand what it means one way of saying okay this in the double series thing the proof which I have given the point of view which I had, we have taken which is very common is the following right if you fix any a in b 0 r you want to write f of z okay you have to find an r positive so that you want to write f of z equal to summation dm z minus a to the power m m is from 0 to infinity for some constants d m and c ok and this should be true for every v0 so there is a constant positive radius r ok so that in the open ball b a r which is contained in b0 r ok f of z is represented by a power series and powers of z minus c this is the thing right so this one this aspect is what i took in the double series but there is another thing if i want to say f is analytic right okay therefore for every z okay what do i want so suppose i take z in b0 r then i would write f of z plus h remember this is nothing other than the therefore the power series yeah let's go back maybe it's worth saying so digression when therefore f is a power series summation c and z power n right and if i want to say if it's analytic then what i want to say is okay then we know f n is nth factor at 0 by n factor therefore this is same as saying f n of 0 by n factorial z power n right therefore in particular if I say for <coughs> are you following what I am saying ok yeah so if I want to say f is analytic ok then you give the Taylor series of f please understand I, I hope I am making sense ok I am always worried about that ok this is my 0 this is my z so let me take some z plus h here ok this is some uh, delta positive perhaps ok and this is my z and this is my z plus h right then what do I want to write I want to write f of z plus h as summation ok some dn into h power n right by are you following but if this is true if this is true remember this dns must be nothing other than n the derivative of f at z divided by n factorial yeah are you following yes yeah. okay so i have to write f of z plus h as something into h power n by n factorial so if i show the taylor series that is f is analytic so this is the observation f is analytic in 
be zero or if and only if for every z in b0 or the taylor series of f at z okay converges to f what does it mean that is for h is sufficiently small f of z h must be nth derivative of z by n factorial into h power n n from 0 to infinity. So, this is the crucial point or uh, part of the proof now. Okay. Please understand. So, we are we are going to say f is analytic. Okay. That means, you if you give me a point A in B0 R, then I want to write f of z as summation Okay, power series in powers of z minus a to the power n, right? Now suppose I write z equal to f plus h, then what does that mean? f of z equal to this is same as saying f of a plus h equal to summation. Okay, some dm z minus a to the power n that is going to be h power n, right? But I know if this is represented by this, then dns are nothing other than the nth derivative of f at a divided by n factorial. But that is the Taylor series. You understand this? So I only want to prove okay the Taylor series of f converges to the function f in small disk around z. Okay. If you understand is better. If you don't understand, I am going to prove this so you can just take it for granted. So this motivates, okay, this motivates now forget everything. So, this is what we saw, this is the motivation, because this observation gives the motivation. So, what we are going to do is for h near 0, we are going to prove and for z in B0 R, okay, for mod h some delta, this is to be specified later. Later delta positive to be specific later we want to say f of z plus h equals summation 0 to n nth derivative of this at z by n factorial h power n. This is what you will prove. Okay. So, what does this mean? This means okay, on the disk b z delta so, you start with any point here, z plus h here, okay, if you want to call it w, f of w is of this form, right? Are you following? Suppose w belong to this, right? Therefore, w I can write as z plus h and h is w minus z and since w belong to this, this means mod h is less than delta, right? Therefore, what do you think I have proved? I have proved f of w equals nth derivative of f at z by n factorial and w minus z to the power n n equal to 0 to infinity. Do you follow that? So, forget about the motivation. What I am well, going to prove is this. If I prove this, then I have proved f is analytic because for every z in b0 I have done that. Okay. So, pause, review, proceed. Okay. So, before that, okay, let us look at the simplest case. Okay, this will also prepare you. Let me just make sure I am sharing. Yeah, this will also prepare you for the general case. Well, see, what is the simplest case of a power series? It is a polynomial, right? F of z, suppose it is a polynomial 0 to capital N, Cn, z power n, n equal small n equal to 0 to capital N, 
right? Here the radius of convergence is infinity. This is exactly a power series c n z power n where c n s are 0 for n greater than, greater than strictly greater than n. Right? Therefore, it is a power series. Right? Now, those of you who have followed my lectures, who have watched my lectures on Taylor series in real analysis or who have read from my book on real analysis, you know the first simplest case I'd look at Taylor series expansion is polynomials. Usually books talk about exponential cos and sine and 1 upon 1 plus x or some such thing, x squared, but we, I talked about polynomial. Okay, so let us try to understand. So, what is that? So, I want to write f of z plus h. What is the Taylor expansion of this? Taylor expansion will be 0 to infinity nth derivative at to z by n factorial into h power n. Right? Now, remember f is a polynomial of degree of f is n. Therefore, the nth derivative will be 0 if for every n greater than n. Therefore, this is actually 0 to sorry 0 to capital N nth derivative of this divided by n factorial h power n. Right? Yeah. So this is the Taylor this is the Taylor series of the polynomial. Okay, this theory. But what I have proved in my lectures on Taylor series or in my book is that this is nothing other than the binomial expansion of z plus h power or capital N. Okay. Now we will quickly go through a proof because it will be very useful. Okay, in a CN, sorry, yeah. So this binomial expansion, sorry, let me write CN z plus h power n and n running from 0 to infinity. I just looked at only the case z plus z power n case, that's why I wrote it. This is the binomial expansion. Right? Now let's how do I do that? Let us look at. So, if I write this, what is this? This is n equal to. So, this is claim. I want to prove this. This is n equal to n. Okay. Of C n. And this is m equal to 0 to n of n choose m and h power m and z minus z to the power n minus m right are you following therefore let us look at this thing let us change this this i can write this as are you following this yeah so let us rewrite this when i rewrite this this we already done this is m equal to 0 to n. So, I am looking at coefficients of h power m. Right? right. Therefore, if I want to write h power m, that means my m, uh, so my, my n should be greater than or equal to m. Then only this h, this will come h power m. Yeah? My m h should be less than or equal to n. Okay? Right. So, this is going to be what is going to be? This is going to be n equal to 0 to m of c n, okay, m choose n, n may run only up to m, okay, and h power m, this to the power z n minus m, and this is m equal to 0 to m. Okay, so let us quick do this. Are you happy with this? Okay, now let us look at. So, what is the coefficient of? Forget this. Coefficient of h power m in this. Coefficient of x power m is going to be. Sorry, coefficient of. Coefficient of h power m, correct. Coefficient of h power m is going to be c n 
right and this will be n choose m z to the power n minus m and this n for each n this will vary right therefore n is going to be 0 to capital N so do I write do I get it correctly yes now let us look at the coefficient of h power m in f k of z by k factorial z to the power k or uh, k equal to 0 to capital N. This is the Taylor series for the polynomial f, f of z. Right? So, what is that we wanted to prove? We wanted to prove that this is nothing other than the binomial thing z plus h power n, n running from 0 to n. Keep that in mind. I want to show these two coefficients are the same. Yeah? Okay. Now, what is fk? Notice that fk of z, okay, now this is sorry, h power k. So, let me write m equal to 0, h power m this is m factorial m okay since i want to concentrate on h power m so let me again write it coefficient of h power m in 0 to capital m f m of z by m factorial into h power m okay so that is f m of z. Let us look at what is f m of z. f m of z, what is f, f of z? f of z is c naught plus c 1 z plus c m z plus c n z power capital N. Right? Therefore, f m m of z, okay, up to these things, all of these things will be 0. I will start with only c m. Right? c m plus this, this will be c, z to the power m therefore f m of z is going to be m factorial into c m plus what will be the next one m plus 1 m and 2 2 into z to the power m plus 1 will be z are you following the last one will be c n n n minus 1 into n minus m plus 1 into z to the power n minus m. Yeah. Therefore, this by m factorial, so I put m factorial there everywhere. Now, let us look at what is n choose of yeah. what is n choose m? The binomial coefficient is n factorial by n minus m factorial into m factorial right but that is i can go up to n n minus 1 n minus m plus 1 into n minus m factorial by n minus m factorial into m factorial so these objects are nothing other than therefore i can write as a short notation this is going to be okay n choose m okay and then there will be a c n and z to the power okay n minus m where n runs from m to capital n make sure you all understand so so coefficient of uh, h power m in 0 to capital n f m of z h power m by m factorial is this object. Yeah. Now, that's what we found out. What was the coefficient of this? Okay, call this as 
star yeah and call this as a dagger so star equal to dagger right therefore we have proved that the Taylor series of C n z power n 0 t n is nothing other than summation C n z plus h power n 0 to capital N. Okay, pause, review, proceed. Usually this is not done. You will have problem. Please learn that well. I went through the simplest case because whatever I did, how I looked at the coefficient of h power m that I am going to use in the general case. If you are, please, okay, so I would suggest please go through this, don't hurry through, understand. This way you will also learn something about Taylor series and how to work with it. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Now let's go back to the general case. If you have followed this far, the general case is so, so very easy. Let us go to the general case now. So we keep this earlier notation, uh, namely f of z is summation c n z power n 0 to infinity and z belong to b 0 right so what do you want to show we want to show for some delta positive and mod h less than delta so that b z delta is contained in b 0 r ok we want to write this as this okay minus 0 to n fn of z h power n by n factorial goes to 0 this is what you want to show okay this we had already explained why this proves the result right now what we want to do we want to make use of the result which we did earlier so let us go okay let us write f equal to fn plus gn where f n of z is 0 to n capital N 0 to capital N C n z power n therefore this is a polynomial and of course g n is whatever is left out n plus 1 to infinity of C n z power n ok and similarly let us write on the other side ok two things maybe this I can write as uh, ok let us it's ok now this one we will write it as ok right now the next thing you should notice is let us look at fk of z is nothing other than fn k kth derivative of fn z plus kth derivative of gn z right therefore this what we want to do is this therefore f of z plus h is fn of z plus h plus gn of z plus h ok now let us look at the other thing fn of z by n factorial h power n 0 to capital n this I I using this I am going to write this as okay summation 0 to n f n of n at z h power n by n factorial plus g n n at z by n factorial h power n okay where this is do all of you understand right now from the polynomial thing what I have seen is let us look at this this is the polynomial this is z plus h power n this is c n z plus h power n n from 0 to n and we know that is nothing other than this fellow 
are you following therefore therefore what do I have I have your power z plus h minus f n of z by n factorial h power on 0 to n okay so these two terms get cancelled so what I am left with is only the start terms starting from n therefore it is okay that is n plus 1 that is m equal to n plus 1 to infinity of cm z plus h power m okay because this minus this is cancelled and this follow what I am having okay gn but remember gn is nothing other than your fn okay you are starting from this series okay and that we know let us look at what is gn okay gn of z is c n z or n n from n plus 1 to infinity therefore gn if I take nth derivative of this this is going to be there is already used to n so let me use a different n c m m m to n to infinity therefore nth derivative of this is going to be c m m m minus 1 into m minus n plus 1 into z to the power m minus n therefore g n n n of z is going to be this by again let us put 1 by n factorial then this is c m as we explained earlier this m choose n into h power n times h power n c m z power m minus n ok this is for n plus 1 to infinity to h power n yeah right ok so what we have therefore is f of z plus h minus whatever it is 0 to n f n z by n factorial h power n equals m equal to n plus 1 to infinity of c m ok into z plus h to the power m minus what I have here ok c c m that c m is already there that is m choose n and z to the power m minus n and h to the power n this one okay pass review proceed okay so let me rewrite oh I think I started the wrong thing okay so let us what I have proved so far is the following f of z plus h minus n equal to 0 to n f n the derivative of this at z by n factorial h power n equal to m equal to n plus 1 to infinity of c m into let us put it z plus h power m minus something okay. uh, uh, m choose n and this goes to only 0 to n ok right in 0 to m of uh, z to the power m minus n and h to the power n maybe I will write a ok m to, this n is already there ok no problem n. ok because it can come only where up to only I don't know where I wrote yeah right this this one can vary only from 0 to n because I am allowed to have only up to n yeah ok right now so I want to estimate this follow this is my LHS 
that is f of z plus h minus the finite Taylor expansion. Okay, so this will be what is the obvious estimate? First, notice that this is this I want to show it goes to zero. But let us look at this. This looks like tail of an infinite series. So if if the the infinite series under question is convergent, the tail will be going to zero as n goes to infinity, right? Well, next thing you see that this is z plus h power n. Therefore, what is the obvious estimate? z plus h power n okay obvious estimate in modulus will be mod z plus mod h to the power m right now this is again part of this is part of binomial expansion z plus h power m again <coughs> only going up to 0 tm terms <coughs> right therefore that is also dominated by each other term is dominated by mod z plus mod h right therefore the whole thing is going to be less than or equal to okay mod cm m running from n plus 1 to infinity of mod z plus mod h to the power m twice. Why twice? I get one here and get another one here. You know it's part. Alright? So if mod h is less than delta, this is again less than or equal to 2 n plus 1 to infinity of mod cm mod z plus delta to the power m. So I want to say this. So what is the series I should consider? I should consider the series cm mod z plus delta to the power m. Now m is 0 to infinity. If this is convergent, then this is becomes the tail end of the convergent series. But this is convergent. When is it convergent? Let us recall what do we know? The radius of convergence of this series is r. That means whenever mod z is less than r, this will be convergent. That means it is absolutely convergent. Do you remember? Then if mod z is less than r, mod c n, mod z to the power n is convergent. Right? That's what we have seen about power series convergence. Okay? Therefore, what all I have to make sure is, I have to make sure mod z plus mod delta, sorry, mod z plus delta should be less than r. That means delta should be less than r minus mod z. Is it positive? Yes, because mod z is less than r. Therefore, take this, this is positive, take this to be delta. Therefore, what I have, this is tail of a convergent series. Therefore, this goes to 0 as goes to infinity. Yeah. So, that proves the result. You saw, you saw that? Do you think it was worth doing the special case for normal first so that you know you get the grips what really happens the algebra part is very clear okay that we immediately used it in the infinite series part right and therefore we can write down okay f of z plus h minus the finite Taylor's expansion okay that what what should be the right side expansion okay that was much easier and after that, it becomes trivial estimate. If you are if you are followed my lectures on analysis, you know these are all very trivial to estimate. Yeah, so this is perhaps the best conceptually simpler proof. Okay, without much preparation, one can always explain very easily. Okay, and this proof is found in my book. Except if I rewrite, I'll give these extra explanations which I gave in this lecture. Okay. When I thought of the proof, I wrote it down, but it was essentially for myself. But uh, when I published the book, I should have given more details. Okay. Hopefully, in the revised edition, I will do that. I hope all of you liked it. We will meet again.